Hello and welcome back to SIW Videos. I am going to go out on a limb today and do something we've never done before here on SIW Videos. Um, this is a trying time for everyone. Everyone is trying to stay in their houses as much as possible because of COVID-19 or the coronavirus. And um, for some people, you know, they're trying to make the most of their time, you know, do things around their house, which is great. And I've been reading, I've spent a lot of money on plants. Um, I've been planting flowers, tomatoes, different stuff. But I wanted to see if there was a way that I could take some of the existing plants that I have and, and make them grow roots to start a whole nother plant. And I've been reading and um, I have two plants that I wouldn't, two different kinds of plants that I wouldn't mind growing roots and making more plants and that are my Nico Blue Hydrangeas and also my Sunny Knockout Roses. I would like more of my yellow knockout roses. So what I'm going to do today, I have read um, different instructions on how you can grow roots on the different plants. And what I'm gonna do today is I'm going to try to take clippings from the sunny knockout rose and I'm going to plant them different ways or um, soak them different ways to try to make roots grow. I've got couple different methods that I've read about that I'm going to try on the Sunny Knockout Roses. I am going to one, take clippings and try, I have a clear glass containers, I'm just going to put them in water. In direct sunlight, in water, let them sit. It takes a while for, from what I read, for the roots to form. So hopefully there will be a part two to this video showing you that I have had some successful roots form whether this method or whether one of the other methods I use. I have also read where you can take your clipping and dip it in peanut butter and then you can plant it in the ground and it'll grow roots. So I've got some peanut butter. We're going to try that method. And I've also read where you can dip it in some rooting powder, which I have that right here, if you can see it. I bought this from Home Depot. It was a little over $5 for this bottle of rooting powder. And I'm going to try dipping some of them in clippings, some of the clippings in the rooting powder. And then I have a container that I took some dirt. This is just regular dirt from the ground. And I'm going to try to plant a clipping in this with the rooting powder. And I also went up, something new that I discovered last year that I like to do when I plant something new is I like to use some bone meal. They say it's real good for your new plants. So I will put that in my dirt and um, hopefully that'll help. And I'll also, the one that I plant in the, the one that I dip in the peanut butter and plant in the ground, I'll probably put some bone meal around that also. Bone meal, I don't think it can hurt. If anything, it'll help. So I've got my shears to take my clippings with. So we'll do that. I'm gonna, like I said, take several clippings and try different methods and see if I have success with any of them. I have already, over the past weekend, today is April 8th, um, just so everybody knows, you know, we're in the middle of quarantine, stay at home orders, kids aren't in school because of COVID-19. It's April 8th, 2020. And I have, over the weekend, I took the hydrangea clippings and I simply put them in water. I'll, I'll show you that later in the video. I'm hoping there's a part two to this video with some success. So let's get to clipping. We planted these last year, so they're not real big, but um, I have two of them that were planted last year. So I'm gonna look through here and see if I can find a good area to take a clipping.
gotta watch those doors. good thing about knockout roses is they're pretty hardy. Um, they can tolerate just about any condition. It's hard to do damage to them. Okay, so we probably have, I don't know, I probably took 15, 16 clippings from my young Sunny Knockout Roses, and we're going through here. They recommend that you try to clip the end at a, around a 45 degree angle, and to try to take the majority of the leaves off so that when you stick it in the soil or the water, there's no leaves in the water or soil. So I'm going through the clippings, and I'm trimming a lot of the leaves off. Um, I love knockout roses. Uh, they seem to do well in all many types of weather. They're very disease resistant. Um, they can handle just about anything. I have a knockout rose. It's a red, it's a cherry red knockout rose that I literally saw the bucket on the side of a road one day and picked the bucket up and it was like a dead stick in the bucket is what it was like. I planted that knockout rose and it's beautiful now, it lives. So they're very easy to, I mean, anybody can have knockout roses. You don't have to have a green thumb because I don't have a green thumb. Just like this, I am experimenting with you on this. I have never done this before. I just want to see if it works because knockout roses can be expensive. Um, and they're expensive for good reason because they're very hardy, they're very disease resistant, they're easy to grow, and they're pretty. And they bloom and they rebloom and they bloom and they rebloom. And so you can't beat them. So they're expensive for a reason. But I figured if I if this works, I mean this is a way to grow your own knockout roses from your own plants for cheap. You don't have to spend any more money on them. So I'm experimenting with you and we'll learn as we go. And I will show you later in this video, when I finish this, I'll take you over and I'm gonna show you my knockout rose that I picked up dead off the side of the road and what it looks like now. That was probably a few years ago I did that. And I'm telling you, it's, it's fine. I mean, it's pretty, it's growing. We've even had to trim it back a few years. I mean, it's just, you'd never know it was dead when I planted it or dead looking. I mean, that's how hardy these knockout roses are and how easy they are to grow. And I've decided that I want a bunch of these yellow ones because I have this landscaping idea in my mind for my front yard. Don't know if it'll work, but we'll see. And so I figured if I could grow my own from cuttings, that's a good way to get a bunch of them because that's what I need for this idea I have in my head. So we'll see if it works. Some of these have absolutely no leaves on them. I think it was something that fell off when I was trimming, but I said, hey, you know what, if nothing else, I'll just stick it in the water. Since I'm doing this, instead of throwing it away, stick it in the water, see what it does. Can't hurt nothing. Just watch the thorns on these things because they will get you every time. So see, I'm just leaving the leaves at the top, trimming all the leaves all the way down, just a little bit, because I don't want these underwater or buried in the dirt. 
according to what I read. So I'm just following instructions. All right, I got those trimmed up. I'm going to take you over here and I'm going to show you the knockout rows that I picked up dead on the side of the road. This, my friends, was the dead knockout rows. And look at it now, and it has been trimmed back. It's thriving, it does well, has plenty of new blooms on it. It's been blooming every year, it's grown, it's healthy, and it looks great. That was one of the best decisions I've probably ever made. <laughs> this started from a stick. All right, so let's start our different methods of trying to plant some of these clippings of the yellow knockout roses. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my buckets, I believe. And I brought me out some little things to write on because I think what I've decided I'm going to do is I am going to dip a couple of the stems in a rooting hormone and plant them in the dirt with some bone meal. And then I'm going to dip a couple of them in the peanut butter and then plant them in the dirt with some bone meal. We'll see which one does better. And I brought these out for me to write on with my marker so that I can label what's what, so I'll know. So I am going to start with digging me out some of my dirt. Like I said, I don't even have any potting soil right now. I'm trying to stay out of the stores as much as possible, so. This is literally dirt I got out of my yard. What would be the difference in me just planting them in the yard, huh? I'm trying to break the dirt up a little bit. It does say to keep your, when you plant them in dirt like this, it says to keep your roots moist. So you probably have to water them a lot. Whereas putting them in water, they're staying in water. I mean, they're sitting in water for weeks or, or months or however long it takes. Okay, I got that cup about half full, maybe a little more. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of this bone meal. This bone meal smells like fish. I think that's what it is, is ground up fish bones. I'm going to put that in my dirt. dirt to it. Get that mixed in there real well. All I keep smelling is this peanut butter. It's almost full, so I'm going to put a little more bone meal in there. It's very fishy smelling. Very fishy smell. What I'm pulling out, if you're wondering, is just like grass. If I see grass in there, big hunks, I'm just pulling it out. All right. So, should we do peanut butter or rooting hormone first? Let's do peanut butter first. 
So I am going to write on this little tag, I'm going to write peanut butter. I'm going to write that on two of them. Peanut. Because that's what I'll do. I'll do two of them in peanut butter. Peanut butter. All right. So let's take us a clipping. And I am just going to um, imagine this peanut butter, I guess, provides a lot of nutrients for it. So I'm just going to dip it around in there real good, if you can see. Get it covered on there. Get it covered pretty good. Dig me a little hole down in there, and I am going to plant it. Pack my dirt down. Put my label on it. So there's one peanut butter. I'm going to start filling up my next. Easier just to pour this, huh? I'm going to have to clean my table off. We just pressure washed everything the other day. I'm going to have to clean it good when I get finished. My husband pressure washed everything the other day. I didn't. Sure don't want to go back and make it a mess, so I'm gonna have to clean it. I hope everyone is staying busy and staying occupied with good things in this quarantine time. I hope you're not having to do too much homeschooling of your children. I know it's a struggle for us parents who aren't used to the Common Core curriculum. But hey, I guess it never hurts to learn it being as that is what they are learning. All right, so I got my bone meal in there and I'm going to find me another clipping and dip it in my peanut butter real well. I'm excited to see which one of these works methods works the best, if any of them work. I'm just excited to see. why I always want to do something like this. I try to remember to label it because if one of these grows and one of them don't, I want to know which method worked for the next time I decide to do this. It'd be helpful, wouldn't it? I think this bird flying around me wants my peanut butter. All right, so we got the other peanut butter label. 
I am going to go get me a little more dirt from the ground because I'm going to need a little bit more and then we'll come back and I'm going to throw the rest of the peanut butter away if it's attracting bug and then I'm going to come back and we are going to do the rooting hormone. All right, let's move on to our next step, which is using the rooting powder. Let me start by putting some dirt in my containers. Oh yes, I forgot I said I was going to pour that because it goes a little fast. What I've been doing is getting it about halfway and then I'll go in there, kind of break that dirt up a little bit, add a little bit of bone meal, and then pour some more. steps. But I am making a mess. But no one ever said this wasn't a messy job. But I'll clean it. Break up that dirt a little bit. Put a little more than half in there, so let me do that so I can add some bone meal. Ooh, that stuff stinks. I know you've heard me say that more than once. All right, take that dirt, those grass clumps off. and I'm breaking up my soul as I mix that in there on top. There must be a lot of nutrients in fish bones and stuff because they sell a lot of this organic bone meal. I bought it from Home Depot and when I was in there the other day I was going to pick up another bag. There was a lady looking at it at the same time as me and there was literally like one bag on the shelf. And you could tell she wasn't sure she was going to get it or not, but lo and behold, she got it. And so there was none left for me. So I was like, ah, it means I didn't need it anyway. I still had some left another time. All right. So let me label my labels. Um, I guess I'll just write hormone. We'll know that's rooting hormone. Hormone. All right, let's look at the directions on the rooting hormone. Application instructions. Take cuttings from a vigorous, healthy plant. Remove any leaves or flowers at the base of the cutting. Stir cut ends in this product. Plant treated cuttings in a rooting, root, rooting medium such as potting soil and mist regularly. Okay, so it says just dip them in here. And this is like almost like a white powder. I don't know if you can see it or not. But it's almost like a white, very smooth white powder. So let's dip them in there. And, and it kind of sticks on the plant when you dip it in there, kind of. 
I was wondering how it seemed like it was just going to fall off. But when I roll this around in this rooting hormone, it kind of sticks on the plant. If you can see that. bring it closer it kind of sits on there so I'm gonna make me a little hole in my dirt and I'm gonna put it down in there pack that soil around it and we'll put me a label on there that says hormone hormone One more of those. My hydrangeas that I told you I did, I just, I don't know if I told you, but I stuffed them in water. We'll see. We'll see. I know hydrangeas are not as easy to grow as knockout roses, but hey. Can't hurt to try. All right, so got some rooting hormone on that one. Stick it down in the soil. Pack that soil down. Stick our label on it. All right. So we are going to take some water. I've got some water in these clear glass cups. And we're going to take some of our cuttings. I'm looking for maybe the shorter ones. I don't know what I'm looking for because, again, this is the first time I've done it. But I just had this thought in my head that maybe the shorter ones, like this, would be better to stick in the water like that. another short one like I said some of these cuttings may not be good cuttings but hey can't hurt that's a short one that one falls too deep in there so my short ones I'm sticking in here because that one falls too deep I'm gonna take a couple of good looking ones and I'm gonna longer ones and I'm gonna stick them in this taller cup to take some more leaves off of that one. Must have missed that. And you don't have to, they say to change the water every every few days i mean if your water starts to look nasty you can change the water um but you don't have to it's not something you have to do daily uh, like i said today is wednesday my hydrangeas that i put in water on saturday my clipping for my hydrangeas i haven't changed the water on them yet All right, so now we have some clippings in water. The recommendation is to keep the plant moist and out of direct sunlight until it's established. So what I have here, and that's the ones that are planted in the soil with the bone meal and the peanut butter and the growth hormone. 
The ones planted in the water, they stay moist. They're in water. So I have a spray bottle with some water in there. You don't want to over soak them according to the directions. So I am just going to spray mist each plant. And you want to do this pretty regularly because they say you want to keep it moist. You just don't want to drown it. I mean, they have no roots on them yet, so you don't want them to drown. And I'm going to keep them under the patio because they said not to put them in direct sunlight. As much as roses love sun when they're well developed, they say don't put your cup clippings in direct sunlight. Spray these well. I had some extra clippings, so I know you didn't see me in the video, but I just took the extra clippings and I used the growth hormone on all of these. It was five extra clippings. Wasn't gonna let them go to waste. Might as well put them to the test. before I close out this video, I wanted to show you the hydrangea clippings that I took the other day. Um, I went the simple method with this. I had read some different instructions on how to do them. They are all just in water. Uh, these were young plants also that I just planted. So I didn't have a whole lot of branches to clip from, but I wanted to try it. Um, these were Nico Blue. I wanted to see if it worked. I am going to leave them outside with the rose clippings. I've had these inside in a window in my house, but I think I'm going to leave all of them out here on the patio because it doesn't get direct sunlight. It stays warmer than my house does. So I'm going to leave them all out here together so that I can see them all. But uh, these are the hydrangea clippings and this is from a These are all from a Nico Blue Hydrangea, which I know um, depending on the acid level in your soil depends on what color your actual blooms are. I personally am shooting for a very bluish purple and I'll wait and see when my new plants bloom what color they are and if I need to I'll add some soil acidifier to it because it's the acid that causes the blooms to be bluer or purpler but I'll look more into that later but yes these are just clippings from the plant and they have been in this water since Saturday so Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so for four days, which it can take a, a long time for them to grow roots. So I'm not, I'm not hopeless yet, but I'm just gonna leave them sitting in there. Didn't do anything special to them other than uh, the instructions said when you clip one, you clip all the leaves off the branch, leaving only the top two leaves, and then you cut those leaves in half. So that is why these look like that and i just noticed i have one extra little leaf right there but i'm not gonna worry about that but my top two big leaves are cut in half and that is what i did on all of these clippings trimmed all the leaves off and cut the top two i was leaving in half so we'll go from there and hopefully like i said there's going to be a part two to this video showing you some success with rooting either hydrangeas or knockout roses, sunny knockout roses, or both. Hopefully they'll both grow roots and I'll have plants all over my yard. Wishful thinking. See you next time. Thanks for watching SIW videos. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to give us a like. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. You never know what we have in store for you. See you next time.